I was scared to lecture by myself, so I'm going to bring Noah up here with me since he did such an amazing job earlier. Anyway, and Dr. Gutowski, thank you so much for that talk. I, I love Dr. Gutowski. We've been friends for many, many, many years. We've worked on a lot of things. He's one of the most academic private plastic surgeons you'll ever meet, and uh, it's, it's great to see that we're doing many similar things together in completely different areas, so thank you so much. Anyway, so today, let's we'll start with the conference. First of all, thank you so much for attending, and thank you virtually, in person. The reason for these conferences is so we can get the, the word out there. We can really understand this. Um, for those that know or don't know, my mom has lipedema, and she had her knee replaced a couple weeks ago, and I wish we figured this out 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago when it's a lot easier to fix and start to treat, and so I think this is really important for everyone. My only disclosure is I'm really happy to be here, so thank you for having me <laughs> and us. <laughs> um, we know that lipedema reduction surgery does work, and it does actually make people feel better. In fact, this was a paper that uh, Dr. Herbst, Dr., um, Dr. Wright, and I published last year, and for the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, we actually won the best reconstructive paper, and it's basically showing that our, the outcomes are working for people, and this is really important for insurance coverage and, and a lot of other things. Lymphatic sparing liposuction has always been what we call the standard. The problem that we're seeing with lymphatic sparing liposuction is we have people come to our office that have had that and then say that they felt better for about 12 to 18 months, and then they'll say the pain came back, and sometimes a lot worse than previous. We started doing our manual lipidema extraction technique to get out all the nodules, and I know we're gonna show some video, and I know it looks gross. It's actually very, very soft, it's very gentle, and most patients, some even in this room or in the conference can tell you they even feel better the next day, so we know we're kind of on the right track with this. Sorry, I look away if you need to, but what I will tell you is we take videos of every surgery we ever do, and when you show this to people that it was inside of them, not only do they enjoy seeing it come out, but it's validating also, because everybody for so long has told them they have nothing wrong with them or lose weight or whatever it's gonna be, so. The most important thing, though, is academically to study our outcomes. And we have to start doing that in order to get better insurance coverage and better things out there. And so I'm gonna let Noah take over, who's our director of research, and talk about what we've been doing retrospectively and now prospectively. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Schwartz. Uh, like Dr. Schwartz said, research is really fundamental uh, for us at Total Lipidema Care because it helps un us understand uh, how to improve the patient outcomes and help us understand uh, what's, what's really wrong and how we can make it better. So we recently launched a patient-reported research study. It was months in the making. Uh, we sent it into IRB for review, uh, and we are now trying to get as many responses as possible from our patients. And today, I'm uh, happy to be able to share some preliminary results. We have about 70 uh, results in, and these results are showing uh, from the patients that have responded so far, and uh, we're really happy with what we're seeing. Uh, this survey study, like I said, is comprehensive. We have a lot of unique questions, over 140. So everybody who's already filled it out, I really appreciate that for dedicating your time. We, we recognize how long it takes, but that we also recognize that it takes a lot of work in order to get people to understand more about the disease. And if you haven't filled it out yet and you're a patient, please, please go ahead and do that. Uh, our primary endpoint here is really to identify the benefits of lipedema reduction surgery. Dr. Wright talked about it today. Uh, and we also are trying to give another angle about how it looks with MLE. Uh, and this includes, we included a series of uh, standardized, validated measures, in addition to some unique questions that help better capture the experience that patients have. Uh, now we're gonna look at uh, first reduction in pain. So the, all the results we're gonna talk about today are really uh, the patient experience. There's a lot of different measures we can do, but I think when we look at a, a bird's eye view, we wanna understand how this affects people's lives and how they're able to live better lives and get their lives back following uh, their surgery and uh, treating their lipedema. So this first graph, I think this was one of the most dramatic we've seen, is the, the differential in pain. So in the blue charts, you see the uh, pre prior to surgery pain level. In the green, you see the after. So if you can't read it on the screen, the, for example, the arms, we went from about a 6.7 level of pain down to about 1.6. So these dramatic differences are based on the 0 to 10 pain scale, the standardized pain scale. And it helps us see how in each area of the body we see dramatic improvements in the pain. And that's what our patients really look for first and foremost, is a reduction in that challenge of pain. Next, we looked at quality of life. Uh, quality of life in our scale is measured on the standardized uh, 0 to 100, 
where 100 is the worst imaginable quality of life because of their lipedema and zero being the best. So zero means lipedema is not having any impact on their quality of life. Prior to surgery, the patients had about a 75, 76 level of impact of lipedema uh, after it would drop down to 41. So this shows another aspect of how quality of life can improve uh, following surgery. This one, uh, this one was inspired by a lot of patients who said that after uh, surgery, they finally could go uh, walk around Disneyland for eight hours in a row. So this uh, question talks about how long someone could walk without needing to take a rest. Uh, before surgery, so your pie chart on the left shows uh, the levels and you have the labels at the bottom. So that big pie chart, the 24%, the big piece of the pie there, means that people could only walk less than five minutes. So 20, about a quarter of our respondents could not walk more than five minutes without needing a rest. If you look in the after, I know the blues are a little confusing, but if you look in the after, that light blue doesn't exist anymore. So all of the respondents from before uh, that couldn't walk more than five minutes could, and actually, even more dramatically, uh, before about 10% could walk for more than an hour, and after about half were able to do that. So uh, this shows just a, another aspect of day-to-day um, -day life uh, that's improved uh, following uh, lipedema reduction surgery. Now this one is a decreased heaviness of legs. So a lot of patients that come in say that their legs feel really heavy uh, and they, they, they can't explain why uh, and we, we've attributed it to uh, the, the lipedema and we ask them on a scale, so of a, a negative five to five scale and how they felt after surgery. So zero means they had the same weight, a feeling of weight in their legs. Negative five means it's a lot less and positive five means a lot more. So following the, sur uh, the survey and that following people's surgeries, it moved to a negative 2.5. So about 50% lighter is how their legs felt. Uh, next, we're going to look at activities of daily living. So first, uh, we looked at movement on the overall scale. So for all the participants that, um, that, that had surgery, we looked at how, how did your movement improve following surgery. 61% said they had an improvement in movement by at least one level. So we had five levels and at least uh, uh, one level of improvement, meaning that they could get around easier, were able to do their day-to-day -day activities easier. Uh, now, even more dramatically, we also wanted to see how it affected people who already had movement challenges. So we looked at people, uh, whether they had to use walkers, wheelchairs, canes, uh, and then we said, following lipedema reduction surgery, how did your uh, movement improve if you had challenges? And that was a dramatic 93% of people who had movement difficulties before lipedema reduction surgery had improvement in their movement abilities. And this one is, I think, one of the most important of all the ADLs uh, that, that we were looking at. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite slides because we looked at the end of the questionnaire. So this is a long 45-minute uh, to an hour questionnaire. At the end, we put a box and we said, please just tell us about how your experience has been following lipedema. And uh, I'm always impressed that after our participants have spent all 45 minutes to an hour filling out all these questions, they then went and then were willing to write paragraphs for us about how it has impacted their lives. Uh, and I put just a selection of them on the slide, but if you look in the center, that was one of the most common phrases we heard where people were getting their lives back. And I think that uh, when we realize that people are able to play with their grandchildren, people are able to go back to th their favorite hobbies, uh, I think that makes it clear how meaningful the work is uh, that everyone is doing in the field of lipedema. Uh, and before we finish up, uh, I wanted to look at, uh, I wanted to highlight a few other things of our survey. We are looking at many other factors, associations with lipedema. We're looking at uh, inflammation, inflammation factors, particularly CRP. Uh, we'll, we'll be having coming in our publication talking about how people's CRP levels, so CRP is an inflammatory marker, are, have been high their whole lives following lipedema reduction surgery. Even in the really short term following that, their CRP levels drop to normal levels. So that's another big factor of our survey. Um, and, and I just want to remind everyone again how important it is the work that everyone does. I appreciate all the work of the patients for advocating for themselves. Uh, we're trying our best to help as well. If you, like I said, if you're, still, if you're a TLC patient and you haven't filled it out yet, please go ahead. Uh, we want to get as many results as possible because everyone in this room understands how important lipedema is and treatment for lipedema is. We want to help make sure that physicians understand, all physicians. We want to make sure that insurance companies understand. Fortunately, at our office, we've gotten to maybe 90% are getting insurance coverage, but still, the more literature we have out there, the more research we have out there, and the more understanding, awareness we have about lipedema and all fat disorders, I think we're going to be able to get a lot better improvements, a lot better outcomes. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Dr. Schwartz. Thank you, Dr. Herbst. Thank you for everyone for being here. I appreciate it.